We're finishing up the steaming in the frames, and that surely calls for some celebration, right? Are you ready? Oh! oh. oh. Camera shot. Oh! Woo! Oh. 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 <laughs> we cracked quite a few pieces of framing stock in the last episode while we were framing in the stern. But now, we've only got five left to go. After milling up more stock, we were ready to finish, but not before fixing the stone crusher. The stone crusher is used to apply a bend to the frames as they are going in, and this takes a lot of force. It started cracking in one of the previous videos and was patched up just in time, but we need something a little bit more permanent. She's dropping. Frame coming out. The numbers for 2018. All right, frame coming out. Gross domestic product is growing. The U.S. economy is humming. The numbers for December are bad. The next one is the S&P all ending down yesterday. Stock is on track to be the worst. Okay, let's start pulling. Yep, just nice and easy. Go pull, 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 pull. Right. Paul, can you come on this side? I think they're going to need help pulling. Oh, pads, pads. Pads. Right yep. next to it. Right here. Pads, pads, and musical fruit. Today. Working. <laughs> <laughs> Working. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Come on, baby. Okay, off on blue. Casey, hard towards me. Yeah. Um, okay. 10 minutes, we're going to sneak one in now. We're in the box. Okay. Wow, man. These are more <laughs> challenging than I thought, eh? Yeah. All right. We're the we home. We're home. Cool. Um, yes. Yeah, all right. I got this. Randy. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Are we down? No. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay, off on blue. Great. Just got okay, tight on blue. Real Pretty hard. Much. All the way. Okay, hard towards me, Casey. Yes, mate. Good. Yeah. Still That's good. Hey, do it hold them there. <laughs> don't let me, don't drop me, Randy. <laughs> You're on the trapeze, brother. All right. <laughs> One. Boat building slash team building. Okay, see, hard towards me. And uh, I feel a trust fall coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm here to help. I use every pound I got. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let out. Port side next. Cool. Steve, starboard or port side next? Yeah. Uh, port. Right. That's just a nice thing to feel. So okay. okay. Um, Never gets old. <laughs> okay, off on, actually hard on blue. <coughs> Casey, hard to me. <coughs> okay. Yeah. You said hard on one, That one, uh... <coughs> what? This one's a little muddy. Yeah, 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 the last two. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. <laughs> Alright. We got two clamps prepped on this side, so... Alright, so we're going to the other side. Four. Probably need three more. You 
tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. Okay, Brock. Any more? Tap. No, no, you're home. You're very okay. home. <laughs> you are very home. <laughs> <laughs> Am I home, Ned? Okay. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> uh, it got caught. It, it just it split and got caught. Sorry, was that a break? No. Nope. Everything's good. You got it, <laughs> Yeah. At ease, man. This is just crazy. <laughs> this is just crazy shit, man. <laughs> cool. Yeah. The next one up in the basket. Yeah. That's the last one, right? Yep. I yeah, and that's still an hour and a half, or hour and yeah, something away. Yeah. One up, one forward, and I think we're good. Hour away. Yeah. Hour away. While we wait for that last frame, we had a couple cool side projects brought over by Randy. I, I want to make a box for the, for this plane. Hopefully, the wood will have enough bend in it. Put it in there and pull it in and. Hopefully you'll take the shape of the plane. Cool. This is going to be yeah. for a, uh, a to hold the kids on a sled, and uh, so I made this form. Yeah. Got to stop here, and I'll hold it in place with one of these guys. Wrap it around. Come from the other side, hold it in place, let it cool. Do the next one. Cool. Yeah. You might have to steam that one. No. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna have to put that back in. Let that go over here. How long was it? In? 15. Yeah, I would do like 25. That's a press round here. Support the, support the bend, man. We're a little off center. We're twisting. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Give, it a, give it a crank there. Does it that seem to be good. going, yeah, Randy? No, it's going good. Yeah, right. yeah I can feel that. There you are. Nice. Randy, you son you putting clamps on that side once more. Where are they? Okay. There's a little. Well, that might you might little, lose little there. Chingus there. Is this the one you tried to bend earlier? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Oh yeah. Get it up. All right. So nice and easy. Lots of hands. Who is this? Yeah, I would like to. No. Not enough. I agree with Satchel. Cook her longer. All right. That was 30 minutes. Uh oh. Yeah, it looks like, like you sound. might need to Didn't like that sound. leave it in a little bit longer. Yeah. So, come to find out, the wood that Randy brought over was from white oak flooring that had been kiln dried. Kiln dried wood does not do as well steam bending, so we offered up some of our stock. We also eased the bend a little bit on Randy's jig. With fresher stock and a bit more work at home, Randy was able to finish both of his projects and they look great. I want to thank Steve and Alex for inspiring me to do something that I always fantasize about doing, which is a little steam bending project. Years ago, I heard somebody uh, had made some wooden boxes for their wood planes and I thought, that sounds great. So came down here, seam bent it. So there you go. Only problem is it took forever. <laughs> people say, well, why don't you make them for other people? Well, sure, I'd love to if I could get $500 for it. <laughs> anyway, it's going to sit on my bench. There you go. Now, let's not forget, we had one more frame to go in the bow. Frame coming out! Frame me out! It's dripping. It's, it's, it's hitting. Yeah, you have to give it some hits. Oh, no, you got to tilt it, keep, tilt it outboard. Keep going, keep going. Outboard. Got it. Hit Okay. That's oh, you, that's you. Yeah. Wow, good God, y'all. <laughs> Hard towards me, Casey? Yeah. Okay, oh, that's good right there. Oh, wow. This one looks nice and soft. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bad. Okay, hold on a sec. Um, guys, he's up on blue. Yeah. All right, Casey, hard towards me. Okay, yep, hold her there. 
Holy shit, that's cooperating. Yeah. Okay, that's what we want. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Easy, buddy. Friendly persuasion. <laughs> Cool. All right. Cool. Good job, folks. Woo! Once the frames were all steamed in, there was still a lot of work to be done. Our friend Ross came back over the holidays to help with painting and oiling them so we could move forward with installation. Steve and Ross even worked on installing a line from the garage into the boathouse so we can run air tools out there, something that will likely be very useful down the line. Once finished, the frames were then installed back into their respective sockets. If you've been following along, you know that we've got all of the frames in, our lion's share of frames into Arabella, and that means the next stage is planking. And we are all set to do that this winter with our oak below the water line and probably scavenging some of the planks off of Victoria and maybe adding some of our pine for above the water line. And it wasn't completely ideal, but it would work and it's the timber that we have. Um, and then we got a call. And that was from a guy out in Eastern Mass who wanted to let us know that he owned some property with a big stand of Atlantic white cedar, which is actually the planking material that's specified for the boat. And that if we wanted to come out and selectively harvest some of the bigger trees that were falling down and uh, starting to rot out, that we were welcome to them. Our friend Paul offered up some beautiful black locust trees off of his property as well. some shear planks, rub rail. Some of these are pretty nice looking locusts. Psyched. That was a good morning. It's lunchtime. We already got all the trees down and skidded. Oh god, does the backhoe make a difference? Um, so yeah, we got a good pile of locust logs there. So hopefully that'll get us some uh, shear streaks and some rub rails and some other fun stuff. So with all that wood cut and piled up, we just need to work on getting them transported to our yard for milling. While we wait to get the cedar logs trucked here and milled and dried, one project that we can kind of fill the time with is starting to disassemble Victoria here. So she's been a, a big marker here in the front yard and uh, has been a great guest housing for folks, um, but now her time has come. So we're gonna start with everything that is loose and or can be easily damaged, such as the binnacle here. And then once the loose stuff and the stuff like the binnacle that we're really worried about getting damaged or removed, we'll move down to the interior and start slowly and carefully pulling all the mahogany paneling apart and disassembling Victoria. Uh, since she's built out of really awesome old growth Honduras mahogany, we wanted to really take our time and pull all the bungs and take out the screws and do everything that we can to salvage as much of her as possible. Uh, when we hit some rotten stuff, we will pull out the sawzall and cut our way through, but anything that seems solid, anything that seems salvageable, we're going to go really slow, really carefully, and try to, try to make use of everything that we can here. So it's going to take us a little bit of time, but I think it'll be time well spent. 
Got it? Yep. Nice. I can't wait to see this all cleaned up. This is going to be so beautiful. <laughs> all right. In the garage for safekeeping. Now that we've got the binnacle and the tiller out of the way up on deck, and because we really don't want to be tripping on the tiller, and we really don't want to damage that binnacle carrying everything in and out of here. The next step is going to be to pull up the floorboards and see if we can get the saloon table out of here, and that'll free up a lot of room. Uh, and then after that, it's just going to be going crazy in here and unscrewing and unbolting and starting to take everything out. So the plan is to get the whole interior stripped, and then that'll kind of give us an idea of what the framing looks like, and we'll start pulling things apart from there. But a lot of the mahogany in here was really well taken care of. Um, so that's why we want to take it apart first, make sure it doesn't get damaged, and uh, get it in storage in the garage so that we can use it later. Drum! Dance party in the bottom! <laughs> okay, all right. There's a lot more room to work with. Pull off the light fixtures now. Yeah, the light fixtures, the chronometer, I think anything that... Anything we can get off the walls and save? Yeah, anything that's going to get potentially damaged. Yeah. And then when that's done, I think we can go through and take everything that's loose, like all the bunk boards. And then we can start pulling like all the cabinet fronts and start to see where we get them in. Yeah, sounds good. Gently dismantling Victoria is a bittersweet process for us, and we want to do that justice. There are plenty of usable resources coming out of her, as well as some amazing bronze and brass parts. So, check back in with us in the next video for that whole process. Make a sweater out of all this fur that comes off of them. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to wear that. <laughs>